Welcome, everybody, to True Exact Show. I am taking a break from your as scheduled advertising, if you will, with interviews and dumb episodes. We're bringing back a little bit of Sharp Vets fantasy sets here. Um, we decided to bring you the NFL season recap and a little bit of the wild card around. It's the winter time right now, so if I'm a little fat in the neck, just forgive me. I don't have any access to gyms right now. And actually, my gym is robbing me for $15 a month, as it probably does for all of you people as well. Sign up for one cent and never go. That's how we do it here. So... We're going to work around this uh, this room right now. Big time, Tim Sakura. How are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. Doing better than my uh, <coughs> JTS Jet Jet Jets. But uh, yeah, we'll get into see. that. We will we'll get into that. Chris Sir Shaw, uh, another nice Niner season. How you doing, man? I'm all right. Scott, I got a question, man. What the hell is oh. a gym? Ain't nobody going to the gym, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's something I don't go to frequently. So, and we are joined here by uh, one of my friends, a younger cat, about twenty-three years old, in age. His first appearance ever on the show, and probably yeah. a social media platform. Nas Hundo, how you doing, man? What's going on, Sky? What's going on? What's going on, fellas? All what right. Up, up? So we're gonna start off with the losers here. Now nobody knows what team Nas likes yet because he's rolling with the uh, Colorado Buffalo, but he is the biggest loser in this room. Maybe not the biggest. <laughs> Why are you gonna loser. do him like that, boy? Yeah, no, no, no. Maybe not the biggest loser of what he's seen. But as I was a Cowboy fan in the '90s and I witnessed the dynasty. I had to suffer. Nas is a Patriot fan, and he witnessed some great times. Absolute I great did. times, but now he's suffering. So we'll start from worst to first. Nas, give us a recap on your Patriot season, your thoughts, and what you think they need going forward, and the breaking news of Belichick being fired. Go on, take the floor. Uh, this season was tough, man. Turning TV on on Sundays, whether it's 1, 4, 8, or Monday night, and it's tough. We all know we need a quarterback. Mac Jones isn't it. You switch from Bailey Zappi to back to Mac Jones. Both guys losing confidence. They don't know what's going on. The locker room's not all in. Coaching staff's not all in. Fans are definitely not all in. So it's it's tough. It really is tough. Now I, I have to I have to say um, we're not we don't feel bad for you. None, none, <laughs> none of us here feel bad nah, for you. Man. As a Patriot fan, though, where would you go in the draft? Would you draft the quarterback? Uh, my what I think, in my opinion, what You're I want to see. What happens, You're the GM. Go. I'm calling Chicago up. Okay. You got to send Justin Fields. Okay. You got to send Justin Fields. You can have draft picks. You can have what you want. We need Justin Fields, and at the third pick. We got to go get Marvin Harrison Jr. He's the best receiver in college football. Best receiver in the drive. So why not? Hold on. Okay. If you call in Chicago, you got to give up something to get to get fields, man. Yeah, ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even want them either. I've seen things where they might even go the direction of drafting Caleb Williams at one. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that might be more for the contract issue, I think, to have a control under a quarterback five more years. I would, I think, listen, I got a quarterback, so I don't know what that's like right now. But all right, Nas, we'll move, we'll move on really quick to the second worst person here and tim i feel bad because i feel like we do this every year we've started the show in 2020 and it is the same story and every <laughs> year it's like wow this could be it now we haven't talked to you since the aaron Rodgers injury in week two week one how was your <laughs> season <laughs> i'd like to yeah, you got me that. crying already i'm I, it, somebody give a minute tissue to have your hopes built up all off season Right. This is the year we're doing it. <laughs> the other years, forget about it. Now we got Aaron Rodgers. We got the quarterback. We got our guy. Four plays in. Come on, man. You couldn't even get me a full game in? Breaking what my did, heart. How did you react? Well, we were uh, down Wildwood Convention in, uh, for the firemen's. Uh, right. And it was, uh, we had partaken in quite a few beverages by that point, but it was mm -hmm. just like, yeah, just threw my hands up. I'm like, surprise! It's the goddamn Jets. Like, I, I, that's it. I, I, there's nothing else you can say. Now, what with do we need? These, yeah, go, go on. What do you need to do? Play GM, Tim. Well, what what we need to do in the draft is draft offensive line. I don't care who's right. back there. I, you need to protect the quarterback. You need to win the line of scrimmage game. I don't care how good Brees Hall is. You you know he's the truth, right? You know he's going to move move the ball with his feet. 
with his hands, but we need we need the line to protect the quarterback to stretch the ball downfield in the passing game. I don't care uh, who the quarterback is. Aaron Rodgers, if he's playing with that same bum-ass offensive line we had, guess what? He's not going to look that good either. I hate to break it to you. The only reason he got hurt technically because he was trying to evade a pass rush, and unfortunately, it might happen again next year. Whatever helped you sleep at night. You would have been better than 7-10 and 10 with Aaron Rodgers, Tim. I'm sorry to break that to you. you 100%. Want- yeah. Um, and as someone who dealt with a quarterback issue, I-, I agree with you with the line, Tim. So in 2010, there was a Monday night game. We had just given Romo a contract, I believe. And a blitz off the side broke his shoulder or collarbone. At that point, we drafted Tyron Smith, Travis Frederick, Zach Martin. We literally built the line you saw in 2016 so like you said that's where you have to go in the draft might not be sexy might not be what the fans want but every quarterback every running back had the line so uh really quick tim how do you feel about beating belichick for the first time and then i knew that was coming i knew that was i could care fucking less (laughs) i I mean literally in a meaningless game i I could care (laughs) absolute less we got one too yeah now, 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 how was this Aaron Rodgers injury matched up versus you guys losing to Pittsburgh in the AFC Championship that one year, or the butt fumble? Like, where do you rank them? Was this the worst <laughs> thing that ever happened to you as a Jeff fan? You, if you guys haven't noticed, I like pain here. No, 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 no. The the, the Pittsburgh game not showing up in the the whole first half definitely hurt a lot more because you were one win away from the Super Bowl. That that was you're playing for it all, right? That that one hurt the most. And then I, I mean the the butt fumble was just one play. I don't people make that out to be way bigger than it actually was, but oh, so that I'm would be that I'm would be last. You, Tim. I think I think I'm rooting for you, Tim. I, I'm kind of starting to feel bad. I don't think you are. <laughs> Why are you lying, old boy? Why are you lying? <laughs> you just like having me on the show because you could bust my chops all the whole time. <laughs> Moving on. The good to thing me. is though, go on, go on, us. The good thing is though the defense is playing lights out. Well, in the beginning of the year they was playing lights out. I felt like towards the middle and end of the year they kind of was like, all right, it's over. We well, don't yeah, they gave up. You have to, yeah. you have to understand <laughs> when you. I don't care how good your defense is if they're on the field for that long, That's like true, right, right. week after week, it takes a toll on you. So now I know a couple of Jeff fans, and they they say like it's impossible. It's so frustrating. It's, maybe it works for you too, Nas, like because your offense is stunk. Both your offenses. Like when you guys watch even an average offense to where they're, you know, they're not great, but they're at least moving the ball. You guys just shake your head. Like, what the fuck? Like, like how can't we do that? Like, move the ball. Like, it, you yeah. know what gets me? You know, sorry, you know what gets me? Uh, when it's one game, mm-hmm. Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi is playing out of his mind. Like mm-hmm. the Steelers game, for say. The Steelers game played out of his mind. And then the following week, you play the Giants, and it's like, well, what's going on right now? Like, where? But I guess hey, it is everyone it is. has his day. Even Daniel Jones went into Minnesota and won a playoff game, which got him a dumb contract. But we'll move <laughs> on to me, the third biggest loser in here, but technically a winner, another NFC East title. It's like clockwork with the Cowboys. And eventually we'll probably run into the Niners again and lose in San Francisco <laughs> just because we don't match up well. But I do want to say successful season. Who looks bad? Helen Moore. Who looks good? Mike McCarthy. Because it was his first time calling plays for Dak, and Dak ended up actually putting up MVP numbers. He won't win it. Lamar will. That's fine. Well-deserved. Agree with it. But Dak actually looked good, and he makes it very hard to fire McCarthy because of the season Dak had. But I do think if they lose to the Packers this weekend, McCarthy will be gone, and Bill Belichick will be your next Cowboys head coach. I do think that. Bill think Parcells so? went there. Never say never. However, I think they will win this weekend, get to the NFC Championship versus your Niners, and probably lose again. Really? I will say this, though. I will say this. You guys, since 2020, have known me. Who have I been pumping up quarterback-wise since 2020 and told you he would be the best quarterback in that entire draft? Please say it. You still have his rookie card? Jordan Lord. I still have his rookie card, and it is poetic that now he's coming into Dallas and he's gonna ruin my fucking season after all this. <laughs> Can you would I don't know what I'd do with myself. Like I need I, it to happen. <laughs> I just need to see the reaction. I I told my dad who's a Packer fan, and it's been nine years to the day since I was at the Dez catch. So I texted him today. I was like, we nine years. It. 
whatever, nine years to the day. And I go, you know, if Jordan Love actually does this after we won 16 in a row at home, I'm jumping out a window because this isn't fair. It's not fair. This is my quarterback. You know, this is my guy. I feel like I brought him with my positivity to the to the forefront. But I do think they'll win this week. Scott, I've seen you jump. It better be a first floor window. Hey, I'm a three point shooter, Tim. You know that. True. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll go to the biggest winner here or the fourth biggest loser, as we like to say. Out of four, not bad, sir. That means you're number one. You're in the same position again. You've seen like a six NFT championships at this point the past 12 years. Last year, you could argue you got screwed over with Purdy getting hurt, and you really proved your point to Philly this year because you stuck it to them, you know, and – how do you feel this year? You feel you're unstoppable? Because I have a question for you after you're done. Uh, I wouldn't say unstoppable because, again, anybody can get any given Sunday. Anything can happen. So I don't. I wouldn't say unstoppable. I'm happy with the season, but one game at a time, my man. I'm, you know, because I've I've gotten burned a lot of times throughout my uh, fandom. <laughs> so I ain't uh, I ain't taking nothing for granted here. That is true, and I, I you know I appreciate it. I, I think that you're humble about it, and I like that. Even though I've never seen you win, and I feel like you'd be really obnoxious when you do win. I think you're that kind of guy. Hey, Tim, what I'm, do you I'm think? Just, I, I want to find out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, we've been waiting a, almost the same time at this point. You're 30, 28 years of Super Bowl. I'm 27, around there, right? It's, it's been a minute since they got one. It's been a minute. So. Can we right. not talk about this? <laughs> <laughs> Nas has six under his belt. He had a great high school career as far as the Patriots win. It'll catch up to him one day. Sir, I want to ask you a question, though. You as a Niner fan. What's up? Because you got the quarterback, maybe. All right. In what order would you be more scared if these people got hurt on your team? Debo, McCaffrey, Kittle, or Purdy? If they got, if they got hurt? Uh... Yeah, who would you rather... So who are the like you not want to see injured out of those four in order? Well, I don't want to see Purdy get hurt because I don't want to start on the case. Would you rather have McCaffrey or Purdy hurt? I don't want any of them hurt. First of all, that's why, not why what we I'm bad juju on my That's squad, not what but... I'm asking. I just want to know how you feel about your quarterback. If he is the reason you're winning, or is it the team? I just want to know your opinion. Who I would, I would rather like. I don't want him hurt, but like. I don't wouldn't mind if McCaffrey misses. I'd rather McCaffrey miss than, than uh Purdy. Hmm. Interesting take. Because yeah. I because we have the backs. We have Eli Mitchell and Jordan Mason that they've they've been known they been they can run hard. But Purdy, do do I really want Sam Darnold out there? I don't know. Tim, does he? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Look at the team he's got around him. I think we could quarterback and, and throw up some good numbers. That's true though. That is that's a valid point. I mean, when you're throwing an IU, Debo, Kittle. But CMC another topic for another day. I'm not knocking the guy. I do think he's a very good quarterback. I just think the Niners, in my opinion, built like the '90s Bulls, and they're just blocking a lot of teams, including mine, from getting from where they to where <laughs> they need to be, and it's really bothering me. So that's all I'm saying. I really, I don't mind the Niners. I don't, I don't hate you guys. Like I hate the Giants, but good luck. I mean, the Niners made Pete Carroll uh, retire, so it's like I want nothing to do with these motherfuckers anymore. I'm Scott. out. Yes. I got a question for you. Go on. If Dallas makes it to the NFC Championship, who right. would you rather play, San Fran or Philly? Philly, because it'd be at home. Okay. I'd rather lose to San Fran uh -huh. than Philly, but I'd rather play Philly. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, me and my brother talk about this. He's an Eagle fan. You got to play who you got to play. It, it, you know, you're going to run in. Right. These are the best 14 teams. Yet you're going to eventually have to play that team. Uh Really round table though, really quick, because I know Nas is chomping at the bit here because he's a huge Lamar fan. Uh, who are you? Who's your league MVP? Tim, I want to start with you. I mean, it's hard to bet against Lamar. I mean, I personally think Dak had a great season. I don't. Mm. I I would probably pick him, gun to my head. Mm. But I know okay. he's not gonna. He's not gonna win. CMC is not going to win. They're going to go Lamar. They're going to go a quarterback from somewhere. But if there was a position player to win, it would have to be McCaffrey. I mean, just yeah, probably. Here's 100%. the here's the kicker though. Like the Ravens finished thirteen and four. The Cowboys were twelve and five. I firmly believe if the Cowboys got the one seed, Dak and Lamar would be a lot closer. 
in the MVP voting. Ultimately, I think Lamar is more of a game changer. Um, but I, he, his team's, he's so well, they're coached. They're just good. The Ravens have been good since we we're kids. It's annoying and I hate it because they're boring, but I do like Lamar. Lamar will win it. Nas, you hear me? Lamar will win it and it's well deserved. <laughs> Even though 100%. I think people are underselling how good of a year Dak actually had because that star is on his helmet. Uh, sir, who are you picking? Uh, if I, I say MVPs, they always go to quarterbacks. Like, I okay. think the off, offensive player of the year is going to McCaffrey because I think he had the best right. offensive year. But MVP always goes to the quarterback, right or wrong. It's and it's probably going to go to Lamar just because he, you know, he he led that team. Like, you know, true. He had, he had a good year. I can't, I, can't, I can't hate on him. He had a good year. Now, Nas, who's the ultimate Dak hater, we have texts about this. Nas won't even admit Dak's an above-average quarterback, which to me is absurd. But let, let's, let's hear him say his piece here. Go on. No, I think Lamar will win it. Uh, he's just been balling all year. He lost his biggest target in Mark Andrews early in the year and still came out and put up numbers that people say is not MVP team. MVP numbers. Mm-hmm. But he led his team to the number one seed, and in my opinion, to win the Super Bowl. But hey. can I ask you a question? Did Brock Purdy lead his team to a number one seed or no? He did, but it's it's different. Like in my opinion, I think you got Lamar Jackson throwing to Rashard Bateman, okay, Isaiah Likely, Zay Flowers, okay. Nelson Aguilar. I mean, he has a good run, a running game. His back went down, J.K. Dobbins or whatever, but. Still, like he's making he's making plays with these guys. It's just like Tom Brady when he was throwing to Danny Amendola, Chris Hogan, and things like that. I'm not comparing Lamar and Tom Brady, obviously, but it's kind of the same thing. And he's just leading his team week by week, week by week, knocking off teams that like they put up 56 points against the, against the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Everybody in this chat didn't think that mm-hmm. was going to happen. Yeah, and they, they think, went to San Fran and beat San Fran. I think the main thing is he's performed well versus the top teams in the NFL. That's what separates him. However, you can't say the receiver thing because a lot of receivers, I feel, don't want to sign with them because of the offense they run. Like, would Debo be Debo in that offense? Would CeeDee Lamb be CeeDee Lamb in that offense? It's hard. You think to not? Back. Yeah, I think hard. Debo, Debo with hard. Lamar could, could be a different. Be Debo, Debo's a little different. He's like a hybrid. You know, it's he's a people with Lamar that could be interesting, but yeah, I see what you're saying though. Regardless, Lamar Jackson is probably your MVP, and I have no problem with that. He's a good guy, root for him all the time, unless we play him in the Super Bowl, and I'll be pissed off and I'll be saying, This guy sucks, he can't. And I'll, I'll be spewing <laughs> shit that is just like not really me, you know. I'll be like, This guy stinks, fuck him, I hate his guts, and then I'll be like, You know, he is a good guy. I feel bad for saying that. Okay, let's move into this wild card around weekend. We got six games on the slate. Niners got the bye. Ravens got the bye. It is what it is. I want to hear your most interesting take, interesting matchup. What game are you most looking forward to? Well, sorry you, sir, since you could sit back, relax in a good way, not because you're knocked out of the playoffs like these two, but because you'll be <laughs> sitting back waiting to see who you play. Well, honestly, the game I'm kind of looking forward to is uh, Rams-Lions. Okay. Bat- battle of number one picks. You know, they were traded for each other years ago. Like, you know, the Lions traded Stafford to the Rams. Stafford went there, got himself a ring. So, I mean, the Rams, are, they're, they've probably been the, the hottest team, like, to close this down the stretch. They're scared. I believe they went, I believe they went what they, I, I wrote it down, actually. Six Yeah, the Rams, are, they, they started the season three and six. Then yeah. they had the bye, bye week, and then they finished the season off seven and one. Like, I don't, know if, I don't know if any team, if my boys would want to play the Rams right now. Like, they've. They're looking tough. So. I will safely say I was rooting for the Rams to win that game because I didn't want to play them in the seven slot because they have mm. championship pedigree. They know how to win. That's a scary fucking team, and it Wait, would not shock me. Yeah, say, it would have shocked me if the Rams went into Detroit and knocked them off. But So that, that's the game I'm, I'll, be, I'll be watching. Now, I, 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 I'm actually more interested, and I stayed away from this game in our picks coming up next. Even though I wanted to pick it, I'm really interested in the Eagles' bucks. Because I don't know how to pick that one. Like, I, the Bucks stink. They stink. <laughs> they, they stink. But, like, like remember last year the Cowboys lost 24-0 in Washington. And then they went Monday night and just beat the crap out of the Bucks. I can almost see that happening with the Eagles. But, like, are the Eagles good? What's going on with them? Is Sirianni going to get fired if they lose this game? So I, I'm actually looking forward to see... 
if the Eagles come out flat in that game, or if the Bucks pull off a miracle, like it would be a miracle, but the spread's weird. Three points, like I, I feel like the Eagles should be favored by a lot more. Almost like the Darren need to take the Eagles, but they're not confident in the Eagles. So I'm looking forward to that one. Plus, I want the Eagles knocked out just because I'm sick of this touch punch and all this bullshit. Like it annoys me. Oh yeah, Jalen Hurts had 13 rushing touchdowns this year. No, he didn't. He had about three. The rest he got pushed in from the one yard line. That doesn't count as a rushing touchdown, in my opinion. Tim, your game of the week. Go. I'm very intrigued to see the Texans against the Cleveland Browns. I think never thought C- you'd say that sentence, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> it's 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 the C.J. Stroud coming out party, national TV, first game of the playoffs. Everyone's going to be watching, all the eyeballs, and you get Joe Flacco, the Angels one, my Old my Joe. jet. My jet backup, man. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, the Browns should always wear those white uniforms. They're really fucking cool. Really cool. Nas, go. You're up. Uh, I'm going to go Saturday night. I'm going to go Chiefs and Dolphins. Interesting. Uh, Full game. I want to see if the Chiefs jump back on track or does the track team take them out. That's that's a good wordplay. Hey, I'm the rapper on this show, not you. <laughs> I didn't I even know that. I get to the word play. All right, those are our games here. We'll get to some other stuff, but let's let's get to our picks. There's six games. Cue the music, Scott. I'll edit that in. There's six. There's six games. Uh, we're gonna pick three games we feel most confident in. Um, Tim, I'll go with you because I feel bad for the Jets, uh, and I think you should start <laughs> just because of that. Go on, man. All right, so. When you said pick your pick, so I, I've got uh, two against the spread, and then I got uh, one over. Go for it. So obviously, I kind of uh, prefaced my first pick. I got the Texas Excellent. money line. Mm. I like uh, that a lot. I huge, love it. Huge I love CJ shout. I mean, listen, there ain't no way Flacco could play this good. I don't care. Doesn't matter. I know that Cleveland's defense is good. Uh, Ward got hurt in practice. He might not play. I'm just, I'm big on the text. Okay. Uh, I'm taking Pittsburgh. When I initially looked, they were getting 10. They're already at nine and a half that they're getting. Buffalo, in like the last, what I write down, they have won by 10 in like the last 13 games. I think they've done it maybe twice. And one of them once against the Jets. So And the Cowboys, 31 to 10 when I drove there to the game. Oh, yeah. yeah. So those are the, those are the two games. I'm taking Tomlin, getting nine and a half points. Mm, interesting. It's just, I think it's that's the pick for me. And although you say the Bucks stink, uh, the Eagles stink too. <laughs> but I think the offenses could put up some points in that game. Over forty three and a half. I could see twenty seven twenty one. Eagles winning. Baker, ba- let Baker bake. He's got receivers <laughs> that's too. A, that's a thing now. That's a a absolute thing. I hope that's not a thing. I hope it doesn't become a thing. All right, I'll go next. So I'm going right up against him. My first game. I'm taking the Cleveland Browns minus two. The 430 Saturday slot, the waste of playoff spot Texans are at it again. It's no different from when Matt Schaub used to be there. The Browns are going to come in. It was a fun ride, CJ. Hope you do good next year when everyone has you in the top five over people you shouldn't be in. Awesome year. Rookie of the year, but this stage, I think, is going to be a little too big for him. I know he didn't play when the Browns beat the crap out of him recently, but I don't think it makes a difference. I think the Browns win this one maybe 24-10. to I'll take the Browns minus two. Next game, I'm going right up against him again. The Steelers, the one year, got in because the idiot Brandon Staley didn't accept the tie game, and the Raiders kicked a field goal. So Ben Roethlisberger got in as a seventh seed. They went to Kansas City and got their doors blown off, if you remember that. (laughs) This is the same exact thing that's going to happen. They're going to Buffalo, who's riding six in a row. Love Mike Tomlin. I think he's one of the best coaches we've ever seen. They're going to get killed. 28-10, to maybe, if they're lucky, and some guy, I don't know, like, falls, tears his ACL, and flips the ball back in the end zone and one of the Steelers defensemen recover for a touchdown. They're not scoring more than 10 points in this game. 13 if they're lucky. Give me the Bills minus nine and a half. Last game, to Naza's point, 
Good game, Saturday night. Peacock worthy. I have it. I don't know if you guys do. I'm taking the Chiefs minus four and a half. They have been going under the radar. They've been overrated all year, yet they find themselves with a home game. Tell me they won't win this game where Miami's coming in, dropping from a two seed to a six, and it's in the cold. Tua, they're all injured. Mahomes has heard chirping all year about it. He's not putting them numbers. Once again, beat down 31-13, 28-17. They're covering the four and a half easy, and it won't be shocking to me. And I'm calling it right now if the Chiefs are back in the Super Bowl in three weeks. Those are my picks. Chiefs minus four and a half. Bills minus nine and a half. Cleveland minus two. No underdogs for me. Sir, go. All right, so one of my favorite plays of this this week is I was looking at the Dallas Green Bay game. And Dallas is a different team at home. Like, on the road, they're about average, but at home, they're pretty tough. They average about 38 points a game. They've been blown teams out by 21, undefeated at the crib. You know, so you would think if you bet them blind at this spread, you'd be 6-2 and two at home. But it's but that's the regular season. I don't know if I trust the Cowboys in the postseason. <laughs> so, I, I really don't. I really, I kind of, and I know you don't either, bro. No, I, know I agree you with you. I see like 24-20, 31-27 all over it. That's why but I see another better. But another play I like, give me over 50 and a half. The yeah, overs are 5-3 and three at AT&T Stadium. You know, Dak was first in passing touchdowns. Do you know who's second? Jordan Love. That, my that would be Jordan Love. Of course you know what I saying? know. See, so if you tell me if Dak averaged 30, 37 points at the crib, all I need is 14 from the Packers to get the over, man, give me that over, bro. 50 and a half. Second play. You know, you, you, as you said, Monday night, you know, Philly, Tampa Bay. I don't think Baker's right, and we know Jalen Hurts is right. Ain't right. Give me under 44. Hmm. You know, oh, that's if, we're going up versus uh, Tim. What? We're going up versus Tim. The over. No, I, I looked at. I saw a stat. It was like in non-division uh, outdoor playoff games between uh, you know, the under is like in the last two decades is it's something crazy like 30 and nine or 30 something and nine or mm-hmm. it's really something in ten. No, uh, something like that. <laughs> it's really good for the under. So. Both these teams can't, you know, are having a look the best. So give me under 44. To that same point, outdoor non-division games. To the under, give me Miami and KC. Give me under 43 and a half. Because mm. down the stretch, it's, these teams played in Germany weeks ago. KC yeah. beat them 21 to 14. Mm-hmm. That's that's 35. That would be un- that's under 43. Last time I checked, it's in the cold. The Miami's not used to the cold. I mean, people down the stretch has not played the best football. So. Give, give me under 43 and a half in the KC uh, d- d- um, Dolphins game. I agree, sir. 35 in Europe is like scoring 60 in America. So yeah. we're going over here, baby. I'm with you now, on that if, one. If, if you would have told me in the beginning of the season, you take the Dolphins and the Chiefs and bet the under, I'd have laughed in your face. But right <laughs> that's now, true. That's, that's, that's a scenario. Give Wait, you under. picked the under. Sorry, you just you went with the under? Yeah, I took un- under 43 oh. and a half. I don't agree with you, but hey, anything could happen. And I trust your picks. One time champion, I believe, you and Tim. All right, Nas, time for you to do your first picks ever that will be here for the rest of your life. So if you go 0 and 3, you're going to get made fun of. All right, the first pick, I'm going to go I'm gonna go Houston money line. Oh, boy. I think, I think CJ comes out and just balls like he's been doing all season. D'Amico Ryans has that defense fired up. It's. I, I think they win that one. Joe Flacco, I give me the Texans. Okay. Second pick. Second pick. Uh, you might not like this, Scott, but I'm gonna go okay. Packers six and a half. I I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I don't know, but I just can't trust Dak in the playoffs until well, he shows do, me why otherwise. Why do you trust Jordan Love though? <laughs> On, you haven't seen it yet, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There Live we go. Face. We see Dak in the playoffs. <laughs> Live face. <laughs> Hey, it's your picks, buddy. Keep going. And nobody talked about this game, but give me Detroit money line. I think Detroit okay. comes out at home, fired up. Dan Campbell has them guys ready to play each and every week. I think they come out, establish a good run game with David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. Toss the ball around. Us. Uh, is Laporta playing or he's out? They said he might play, but he might wear it up race for me. All right, well, well they got Amon St. Brown. Jameson Williams, a bunch of guys out there that defense is talking to the ball. Give me Detroit money line. All right, man. Good picks. And, uh, you know, some say that the NFL is like the WWE and their storyline. So if Detroit does win that game and Dallas wins, they'll have a rematch with the bullshit two-point conversion call. 
uh, back next week, which will be very interesting because that's all you'll hear about. Even though, tough shit, grow a set and make a play. I don't care. I don't blame the refs anymore. They have three chances. You still should have chances, they they kicked the extra point, right? Agreed. Yes. After the first, yes. Absolutely. Should have kicked it. Hey, You don't, you don't blame the refs if, if it goes your way, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I don't anymore. I really sure. don't. I'm, not, I'm in the mindset, okay, next play, someone step up. Like, so make a play. In my opinion, calls even out. Uh, they do. Uh, throughout the game, they even out. What are you shaking your head for? What if you had a bad call? Go, you're actually 2011 <laughs> the Giants. They didn't call the fumble on Bradshaw. They said they blew the whistle. That's a bad one. NFC Championship. Yeah. Sorry. Or, or, or the holding call against Sherman against uh, Crepe in the end, in the corner of the end zone. All right. Well, we still should have made the play. Right? <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're free. I haven't got a call. All right. <laughs> Sir, you probably have a Super Bowl if Kyle Williams knows how to get away from a punt. <laughs> I'm still, sorry. Still, still brings a tear to my eye, Kyle. God, I know. On, Poor guy. So now you know how Sir is going to act when he actually does win. He, this is all coming back at you, Scott. So just be That's ready fine. for it. That's what you got to do here. All right, those are our picks. What I want, though, is our Super Bowl picks. And then we'll get to our final same-game parlay, which I said to, to do to see see if we can make you some money, anybody who's watching. Most likely we'll lose it for you. And you could blame Tim all at his Twitter on the link section. You could just sit here and blame him for, for not winning. So my Super Bowl pick, I am going – I tip my hand a bit. I am going – with the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC. I'm a firm believer that you got to knock the champ out before you get that belt. And until somebody does it, I am not convinced otherwise. I think Patrick Mahomes is the best player in the NFL. I think he's the best quarterback we will ever see once his career is said and done. And I am not betting against him. Uh, you're telling me he can't go into Buffalo and win that game? And then you're telling me he can't go into Baltimore and win? I just I have to see it first. Like Nas has to see Dak win. I got to see Mahomes lose. <laughs> it's one of those things. And then I can easily go with the Niners. But that's not who I am. I am going with the Dallas Cowboys to shock everybody this year. Um, I'm going to pick them as a wild card to get in. It's it's a better bet than more people think. I I think that there's a stigma about them that they're not that good. They can't step up for the big game. And you know what? They haven't yet, but one time is all it takes. I do think they will get this there this year. So those are my Super Bowl. And I've never picked them to get there. You guys know that. I never picked them to get there. I'm not a homer. I do think that the Dallas Cowboys will shock everybody this year and get to the Super Bowl and ultimately lose to Andy Reid and the Chiefs. So I think the Chiefs are actually going to repeat as champs. I'll be so wrong, and you guys could criticize me, and it'll be phenomenal. I want to go to Nas here for his Super Bowl picks. Your first ever. Go. Uh, Super Bowl picks. Give me Baltimore versus the Niners. I guess that's oh, everybody's geez, Super Bowl pick. I don't yeah. think you're going to get that. I think Tim's going to be a little different here. But all right, fair enough. He's going with the one and one. Yeah. Hate to go to a restaurant with him. He'll probably order <laughs> the special or what's on the menu. You're probably a real tourist, huh? You buy airport hoodies. You know, you're yeah. one of those guys. Airport <laughs> shot know. glasses? Hell yeah. <laughs> Tim, what do you got? I I'll go off the wall. Scott, you're right. I'm not going one and one. That's why you're big time Tim Secor. That's right. Out of the mm -hmm. AFC, I've got. The Buffalo Bills. You know, it's I don't hate it. I, I, I don't. I don't hate I, it either. Josh well, Allen's a, that guy, man. Oh, okay. Who you got in the NFC? Out of the NFC, and I have to pick this because this is the only reason I was allowed to do the podcast today. That's the Detroit you. Lions, baby. Oh my God, you son <laughs> I knew, of a bitch. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I thought you were going Cowboys. I really did. No, I no. Got, you know what? That'd be a fun Super Bowl. Lions and Bills, like from a perspective, that's a Super Bowl you could tune into. And you don't care who wins. Let's just yeah. have a good time. <laughs> Actually, we played basketball with a Bills fan, and they were kind of dicks when we went to Buffalo. Mm. The fans, I'm rooting against them by all means. Sir, who you got? And do us a favor. Pick a team other than your Niners. I'm kidding. Go on. Listen, first of all, I mean, NFC, you guys already know. I have to go with my boys. I mean, because I've, I've been riding with him all this, the whole time, so got to stay with him in the AFC. I'm t it's torn, but for some reason, I think Baltimore. I think, I think we're going to see a rematch of the uh, 
Christmas Day game between Baltimore and San Fran. You're just not going to say a rematch from the Super Bowl you lost 11 years ago. You're not going to go that route. So I'm yeah. really horrible. I'm a mean person. Okay. I'm a hey, weird, look, look, God, nobody's surprised that you picked the Cowboys today. Come on. <laughs> I would have been more surprised if you had picked against the Cowboys. Sir, I have to ask you, what team, because obviously the Niners are a level above, and to beat the Niners, like, if Dallas had to go in there, Purdy could go 10 for 12, 86 yards, and you guys could win that game 30 to 10. Dak would have to have one of those, like, holy fuck, 35 for 40 performances. So as a Niner fan, what team are you actually more scared of? Would it be the Rams? A team Honestly, that you- I would, To be honest with you, it's probably the Rams just because the division game, like, I, I would yeah. say, no matter the record, division games are never easy. So they're brutal. Yeah. They're, they're like, th- that team is built to beat the teams in their division. Like, Bro. so. I, so I hope I hope Detroit knocks them out, you know, this Sir, weekend. What, but what was the record, you guys in the regular season, Niners against the Rams? Uh, they split, but th- that was when Sam Darnold. That was they, they yeah, lost the last, last week of the season with all the backups in, pretty much. So, so that doesn't really count. Okay. And let's not forget the year the Rams won the Super Bowl. You guys had a fourteen point lead in the fourth quarter. I yeah. believe and blew it to Matt Stafford. Sorry, I'm just bringing up that. <laughs> you can bring up the Romo drop snap, the Dez non like you have ammo here. We're not like that, thing. Scott. We're, We're not, not like that. I don't know what you guys do in Middlesex, but in <laughs> I don't live there anymore. I've moved. <laughs> All right. So um, but Tim, really quick, I want to touch on your Super Bowl pick. You say Josh Allen's that guy. Now, this yeah, is yeah. something that we it, we actually argue about at the courts. I play basketball with Nas a lot. And and the young kids argue way more than us older heads. We just I sit there and I stir the pot and back away. One of those yeah. kids and just watch it and sue. <laughs> One of the you throw, guys throw the grenade never, in there and then yeah, run away. Huh? You would have never guessed that, huh? Yeah, but yeah. I just do that. You say Josh Allen's the guy, the guy. And I don't disagree with you. But do you feel he gets a little bit of a pass in the media for not being as criticized as someone like a Dak? What makes Josh the guy? That Dak isn't the guy to some people. If if you got what I'm saying, yeah. So, uh, basically, for me, I guess it's the eye test. Okay, that's right. I, I can literally see him do everything on the field at any point in time, at any point in the game. Sure. If the ball's in his hands and there's still time on the clock, and they have a chance to win, I think that they can win the game. That's Not against very, my very, Patriots this year. It's <laughs> very, 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 very important in the postseason if that's. What's going to happen? Full disclosure, I actually would take him as the third quarterback in the NFL. Uh, so it's not like I, I i actually do like Josh Allen. I think he's better than Dak. Gun to my head, I'd take Josh Allen. Just want to throw that out there. All right, same game parlay. That's our final segment here. Uh, same game parlay, three legs or more. We're going to try to win you some money here. Now, since I'm the worst at this, I'll go first. Not a same game parlay guy. <laughs> not an SGP guy. Just not that type of person. So... I stayed away from this game of the picks, but I'm going to go to it for the same game parlay. I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay uh, Eagle game. I'm going at Tampa Bay plus three. Mike Evans, who kills the Eagles, as my brother's been texting me all weekend about. I've been trying to talk my brother off a ledge who's an Eagles fan. And I'm trying to tell him, dude, you're still in the playoffs. Like He's like, we're done. Sirian needs to be fired. And, you know, he goes, Mike Evans kills us. So I'm going by his logic Look, here. Scott, say one thing. A lot of Eagle fans have been jumping off the absolute oh. cliff. Yes, they, the, <laughs> they got off to a hot start. They came. They came to San Fran. San Fran, you know, they were, sorry. San Fran went to Philly, and all of a sudden, since, ever since that game, I have been hearing Eagle fans. Oh, we're one and done. We're one and this and that. Stop it. I mean, y- y'all, I y'all still in the playoffs. Anything could happen. But like, I they've agree. been jumping off the absolute cliff since this. I since agree. That game. They still have a good team, a good quarterback. Regardless of what you think, it hurts. I mean, going into the year. I didn't think he was the best quarterback in the NFC, but who am I? I must be stupid because I don't go judge by one year. Anyway, I, I, besides the point. So Mike Evans over 66 and a half. Baker Mayfield, two touchdowns. And then Mike Evans and any time TD. That's not a crazy same game parlay. 50 wins you $338. 10 wins you, I can't do the math, but do it in your head. So 50 wins you 337. Um, I do think even if you get the Tampa Bay plus three on that parlay, I do think the Eagles might win 23-21, so you still cover on that. But I would go a little bit uh, heavy on Tampa Bay, especially with Mike Evans and the Eagles' defense, which 
is not that good. CD Lamb had like 200 yards versus them. Receivers have shredded them. So let's go to the left. Uh, my left on the thing might be a little. There you go, Tim. That's you. Uh, the it, it'll end up being plus 475 with all the picks that I have. It's only three. I've got CJ Stroud over one and a half touchdown passes. I've got Nico Collins over 74 and a half receiving yards. I got Joe Flacco to throw over 0.5 interceptions. So just one. Pick. Oh, I like that. That's a good pick. Hmm. What was the money on that? Sorry. Plus 475. So 50 to win 237.50. See, that's pretty good. Right? That's. Yeah, if that's the math, man. Okay, I don't know. got you. Nas, give us your say SGP. All right. Well, I'm going to go to your game, Scott. I didn't. Oh, boy. So this is going to be heavy on the Packers here. Let's go. <laughs> nah, give me uh, Dallas minus two and a half. Okay. CD Lamb, anytime touchdown. CD Lamb, 100 plus. And give me that, two touchdown passes. Oh, my God. Did you have odds on that or no? I didn't, but I just feel like that suits. A Dallas home playoff game that's been hitting cash in every year. Um, every year, every game. I feel like I'll just so. assume that's around what mine is fifty for three thirty-seven. Sounds about yeah. There right. you go. Yeah, sir, you're up. Go. It. So actually, I'm about to go to the uh, Pittsburgh Buffalo game, and mm. you guys talking about Josh Allen. One of my favorite bets to play pretty much all season has been Josh Allen to throw one interception because that's what he does. He 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 he's a good player. He turns the ball over at least at least once a game. So. He going, I think he's going to throw one interception that game. Then I got Josh Allen over 37 and a half rushing yards. In big games, Josh Allen likes to run the football, you know, because when things break down, he's a big boy. He takes off running. So Josh Allen over 37 and a half rushing yards. And the last leg, probably my favorite leg, is Jalen War- Warren over three and a half receptions. Every oh. game this season, he has a three or more receptions. And five straight games, he has four straight receptions. So with check down Mason Rudolph, Give me Jalen Warren over three and a half receptions. That's a plus 700 SGP. There you go. That's 50 for 350. I can do that math very easily. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't run out of fingers, Scott. It's nice. <laughs> See, only, only three legs. And that Jalen Warren one is plus money. So that's, I like that. I like, I like right. that. I like that right. a lot. This is our first episode. We will come back every week uh, to give a recap of the wild card <clears throat> weekend and we'll do divisional and yada, yada, yada. Uh, enjoy everybody. Um, until next time, we'll see who's miserable and who's not. And if, <laughs> if oh, only one of us is playing this week, circuit, sit back and relax. So, uh, my team's not losing this week. Don't worry. They ain't winning either. Yeah. Well, so. uh, <laughs> with the particulars. <laughs>